Uh, thanks for staying with us. The uh, government plans to provide 77,400 free housing units across 774 local government uh, areas under the National Social Housing Fund, uh, funded through the 1.2 trillion Naira voluntary contributions. Each house valued at 10 million Naira will include two or three bedroom units with a program expected to launch by the end of 2025, pending legislative approval. Over 252,000 jobs have been created through the broader Renewed Hope Agenda with additional schemes like the Rent to Own Program and National Housing Fund offering accessible home ownership. The annual housing deficit of uh, 550,000 uh, units prompts calls for a 500 billion Naira housing budget starting in 2025, aiming to enhance economic opportunities and inclusivity. Nika Gule is a public affairs analyst and he joins us today from Abuja. Good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning, Yamgo, and good morning to our viewers globally. Okay, so seven. 77,400 uh, divided by 774. That is the mathematics that is being done here. Would like your comment, first of all, on this scheme, which is going to be launched in 2025. I have no hope in this scheme. Unfortunately, my hope is not renewed. Uh, I would like my hope to be renewed. And my hope can only be renewed if the government is taking the right steps to jumpstart the economy and put Nigeria back on the firm footage, or on the firm foot for, uh, on the development uh, ladder. So we have been having government-funded housing programs in the past. They have never worked. So Nyambu, I want to make it clear that as a person, my view is that the Nigerian bureaucracy has become so corrupt and so incompetent. Is it incompetent? There are really competent people in government. So perhaps they just say the, the, the lack of rule of law has affected government governance in Nigeria to the point that I don't have any hope in government trying to deliver anything. It's not just housing, just anything. I don't have hope. And I, and I can tell you that as a Nigerian who is 58 years old, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I, I can be considered an elder now for someone who is, who is trying to touch 60. I can be considered an elder. And I spent a large chunk of my life in Nigeria, and I have seen things happen in this Nigeria over the years. So when I'm talking about anything, I'm speaking specifically from experience. I recall that as a young boy, right in primary school, through my secondary school, through my university education, growing up in Nigeria, I saw the housing projects that government had built. And none of them had occupants. No, no, absolutely none. Government will come, build this uh, housing uh, project, and leave them there to rot. You know, I, I, I thought it was only in Benue where I was growing up that this thing was happening. But the first time I took a trip to, to, to Benin, where I, I went to university, uh, by the time I, I left uh, Benue Axis and I got to, to Ninth Mile in, in Enugu State, I, just before you get to Ninth Mile, there was a gigantic government housing estate on the left. And it was left there to rot, you know? So th th this is not the way to go. We cannot continue doing the same thing and expecting different results. What government needs to do is, government needs to get itself out of this issue or let me go and build house, let me do this and that. Government's work is to create the enabling environment and be a regulator of the sector and allow the private sector to run this scheme, you know? So what, is, what are the issues here? The issues here are number one. If you go anywhere else in the world, you'll find out that government through interest rate policy 
has made it possible for people to get single digit mortgage loans from the banks. I'm talking about the banks, you know, and these loans enable whoever, whether they are civil servants, they are employees in the private sector or so, to build their own houses and live in their own houses throughout their working career. So that instead of paying rent, they are repaying mortgage. And at the end of their working career, they would have fully repaid for the house. So the house is their own. In their retirement, they have a house they call their own. They are living in. If they were paying rent, you can pay rent for 30 years or 35 years, which is the lifespan of your, your career. And not even a single window on that house that you paid rent for 35 years belongs to you. So in your retirement, you will still be looking for money to pay rent. This is how government is supporting. In Nigeria, what is happening? As I speak to you today, the monetary policy rate is 28.75%. So by the time the banks and all are at their own uh, charges on it, you can only see a loan close to the 40%. Who will get a mortgage at 40%? and we'll be able to repay it. These are the issues. So how can government be talking about expansion in the housing sector when monetary policy rate is as high as nearly 30% in an economy? Look, let's not forget, Nyamgo, every employee, both in the uh, public sector and in the organized private sector, they get the, their salaries deducted on a monthly basis uh, for the, uh, to the National Housing Fund. What has been happening to that fund? What has been happening to that fund? And to say now that, oh, the, the, the Federal Ministry of Housing has now said, oh, the 50 billion Naira we budgeted for housing in the 2025 appropriation bill is too small. We are now going to go for 500 billion Naira. The question is that, was the minister sleeping when the appropriation bill was being put together? See, the appropriation bill was just tabled by the president a few weeks ago. Why, why, so why did he not include his 500 billion inside? Are we not talking about a supplementary appropriation bill? That is, we're not even talking about supplementary appropriation budget. I mean, uh, budget yet. A bill that was just tabled. The minister has come on there to say, "Oh, the 50 billion inside." So, do you, can you see the thinking of public uh, officers in Nigeria? A man like that should he still be in his job? It shows that. He doesn't know what he's doing. Because if he knew what he was doing, up to a few weeks ago, he had the opportunity to put the 500 billion he's talking about in the appropriation bill. But he didn't put it. His boss took 50 billion and put on the uh, or before the National Assembly, only for this man now to come later a few weeks now to say, oh, I, we need to. So you see, they, they, they like to address press conferences, make noise, give Nigerians hope to think that something is happening. Whereas, Nothing is happening. Ask them. The monies that have been deducted from workers for the National Housing Fund, what is happening to it? Why is it that the workers who have been contributing all this while don't have the housing? You know why? Because when that 50 billion or the 500 billion Naira gets into their coffers, the first thing they are going to do is that they are going to order new, new vehicles. They are going to travel. Oh, we're traveling to Brazil to go and see how they do housing there. Oh, we're traveling to Saudi Arabia to go and see how such housing is done there. Then they will now enter contracts that are over inflicted, and then the contracts are not delivered, or if they are delivered with poor quality and all of that. That is what happens in government circles. So if President Tinubu really wants to resolve or solve anything in Nigeria, he knows exactly what to do because he's a private sector man. He knows exactly what to do. So for me, I don't think there's any renewed hope here. And if ever that 500 billion is approved, it will just be money for the boys. My, my concerns are, I don't know, when you mentioned the fact that uh, these estates or these uh, housing units have been abandoned and all that, I've, I've just been asking myself why that is. Because we've been crying that whenever the government says housing scheme, 
they bring this housing scheme and the people who need the houses cannot afford it. It's the same politicians that go now and buy these houses and maybe rent out or whatever they want to do with them. But we have found out that when an estate is being developed by the private sector, for instance, even before they finish it, every unit has been bought. And sometimes when they don't buy it before they finish it, once it is finished, they buy all the units and people begin to live there. So what is the problem that a government will have a housing estate and people will not inhabit it? What has been going on? Because if, for me, I feel these housing units that they're talking about, 774,000, they are not enough because that means every local government will have 100 houses. Where will it be? Local government headquarters or one of the villages or where? Where will these houses be? Okay, just 100 units per local government. But now, the question is not whether there are many or not. Why is it that the government can't get people to inhabit these estates like you have stated? The same question we are going to ask, Nyamgo, we once had a Nigerian Airways. Why is it dead when the likes of APs are flying all over the place? We once had a Nigerian National Shipping Line. Why is it dead? Why other shipping companies are all over the place? We had the uh, refineries. Why are they dead? When an individual like Dangote can come and build and operate the largest single line refinery in the world. We had a, uh, you know, we have, we have a transmission company of Nigeria now. Why is it not transmitting power? Instead, every day we continue to hear stories and uh, they address press conferences as to why transmission capacity is not there. The bottom line, Mr. Yangu, is that government all over the world are unable to run business efficiently, as efficiently as the private sector will do. But the Nigerian government is suffering a, a more de uh, debilitating illness. And that is the lack of rule of law that translates to anything goes in government circles. So with that kind of situation, with, with a bureaucracy that is so corrupt, you know, and inefficient, you are not going to expect anything to come from them. Because like the point you have raised, yes, I know that even here in, in Abuja, uh, as estates are being built, they are being snatched, uh, snatched uh, up. The, ha the housing units are, are, are being snatched up. That's to tell you that there is demand, you know? So if there is demand, why is it then not being fulfilled? Why are we not now having supply to, to be able to take advantage of this demand? Because even the higher the supply we have, the lower even the cost, the, this, uh, the cost of these housing units. But two things. Number one, if you look at those who are snatching up this uh, housing unit all over the place, like in a place like here in Abuja, is either there are private sector people who are in the management cadre. That means they have the money to be able to buy homes. Mm -hmm. You know, especially that there are no mortgages that are available at a single digit interest rate for them to take advantage of. Or there are government people who are stealing government money and using it to buy these housing units. So don't be surprised that in some of these estates, the, 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 it's one person who is going to buy 10, 20, 30 housing units because he has uh, got himself uh, uh, so access. He has got himself access to, to government money somewhere, right? So that, that is the other thing. The civil servant, the average civil servant, the average person who is working in Nigeria, Ask them if they will be able to afford any of the housing units in this giant development project, housing projects that are being built across the nation. They are not going to be able to fund it. And that is why there is this desire by civil servants or even those in private sector to try and make money beyond their salaries so that they can afford some of these things in cash. Elsewhere, uh, Mr. Nyambo, if you are on minimum wage, you can buy your car on loan, you can buy your house on loan, and then you are you are working and paying 
for your house instead of paying your rent, paying for your car, instead of paying transportation to to and fro. <clears throat> and at the end of a time period, you are able to have this thing belong to you. You are the owner. In fact, you are the owner right from the beginning before you start paying for it because everything will be in your name. But if you come and look at it in Nigeria, the policies of government are not supporting such an environment. You understand? Let me give you one example. As we speak today, apart from the fact that the interest rate is 28.75%, the cash reserve ratio, or CRR, is 50%. What does that mean? It means if I, as a bank customer, immediately I take my 10,000 Naira this morning, and I go and deposit in a bank. Bank, take my 10,000, keep it for me. The bank is expected to take 5,000 Naira out of that money and go and keep it at the central bank. You understand? Mm. So the bank does not have that 5,000 to be able to give me a housing loan. You know, to go and even uh, 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 go and build a house. The central bank is sweeping 50% of all deposits in Nigeria and we're housing them at the central bank. I do money doing nothing there. And then you now hear that Nigeria is going abroad to go and borrow money. You say, ah, so why are you not just taking the 50%, the trillions, which are 50% of the deposits of uh, customers here, pay interest on it so that the banks can also pay interest on those who are the depositors? Nothing like that is happening. You know, so you, you see that in Nigeria, there is a big problem. You look at me, look at my chest. My chest has two lungs. There's a lung on my left and a lung on my right. These two lungs, they breathe in together and they breathe out together. If one of my lungs is breathing in when the other one is breathing out, I am at the point of death. What am I trying to describe here? Every economy has two lungs. The fiscal policy is one long. The monetary policy is another long. Look at the way the lungs are breathing in Nigeria. The central bank, and they will soon hold another NPC meeting. Just watch what will happen. The central bank is contracting, is tightening the economy. You understand? Why the, the that, that is the monetary authority. Why the fiscal authority, which is Federal Minister of Finance, and budget. They are saying the economy will grow. They just put a budget proposal and they say the economy will grow at 4.6%. So how is it possible that one long is contracting the economy, packing money from uh, banks and keeping it? And uh, uh, we say, oh, because inflation, we need to pack the money and keep it. Then the other long is say we are growing, we are growing 4.6%. Is, is that economy not heading to death? This is the problem, Nyango. This is the problem. And we say we have a coordinating minister of the economy. So how can the coordinating minister of the economy sit in a meeting and one half of his coordinating, which is the monetary policy, is contracting the economy? And then the other half, which is the fiscal policy, is trying to expand the economy. How does that work? You know, so these are the problems we have in Nigeria. Even when we deal with those problems, matters like housing and all of that, we'll not be discussing them now because any worker can just take the employment letter, walk into a bank, get a mortgage, get their house, and they are ready to pay their mortgage through their career. We will not be here talking about it. A minister will not be addressing press conferences about it. Just like uh, no minister is addressing press conferences today about telecoms, and we woke up this morning, we switch on our phones, they are working, and off we go. But electricity is not like that. Steel is not like that. <clears throat> power is not like that. I mean, uh, uh, power is electricity. Steel is not like that. A gas is not like that. You understand? Because government is still struggling in these sectors. So government just needs to let you go with policy. Yeah, well, it's, it's, so when we go beyond beyond crying that we cannot get this housing unit. Uh, that's why I was just wondering why this housing units will be there and nobody's mm -hmm. inhabiting them. But what do we do with this kind of structures? Because in Nigeria, it doesn't seem to be uh, like government is a continuum like they always say, except in some areas that benefit them uh, personally. 
Otherwise, why would a governor come, for instance, if there are housing units uh, that you're talking about, maybe they have built it to lintel level or they have roofed it, they have not put doors. He wants to leave his own legacy. He doesn't want to continue with that. He abandons that and goes and builds his own uh, housing units and all that. He leaves again without completing everything, without making sure that people inhabit it, and then putting up exorbitant prices that people cannot even pay for this housing and all that. I, I just, what can we do about this waste going on in Nigeria? Because... We can't be waiting for the 100 units per local government. In my local government, had, uh, in my local government where I come from, if you build the 100 units for, in the local government uh, headquarters, it will take a lifetime. Some people will never see it, not just to inhabit it. They will never see it because it takes hours upon hours to move from my village to the local government uh, headquarters, which means the empowerment is only for the people who either live in the local government headquarters or they are from the local government headquarters if i want to build in my own in my own village i cannot build because this is what government is saying so first of all what do we do to the infrastructure that has been abandoned shouldn't we be looking at policies that will make sure that the government must complete these things and make sure they are inhabited or what is the problem what can we do what can we solve it how can we solve it problem is a single answer Lack of rule of law. Nyamgo, until we begin to run Nigeria with the rule of law, we are going to have these conversations until our time in this world will pass over. Another set of Nigerians will come and we'll have these conversations until they pass over. There is no nation in the world that is developing without the rule of law. I challenge people. Sometimes I put my pension on the table and I, I say, show me one nation in the world that is making progress without the rule of law. One, if you show me one, I'll hand over my pension to you. So let's go back to the basics. You know, uh, Yangu, look, when you arrive at an international airport in Nigeria, you're a foreigner, you arrive at an international airport in Nigeria, <clears throat> apart from the shenanigans that you see with the custom and immigration who are demanding this and that, which is quite strange, because for someone coming to Nigeria for the first time, and they have traveled widely, it will be so strange for them to hear that you are at the airport and somebody in uniform is misusing his uniform by asking you for, for a tip. You know, I have never seen that happen anywhere else when I have traveled. And I, I have traveled widely too. After you leave that shenanigans and you come out of the terminal building and you get into your taxi and you are now driving into town, one of the first things that is going to shock you is that there are vehicles on Nigerian roads whose plate numbers are covered up, you know, because a plate number is the identity of that vehicle. That's the identity of the vehicle. It's the name of that vehicle. As my name is Nikagule, a plate number of a vehicle is the name for that vehicle. The name is not Toyota Prado. The name is the plate number. And with that plate number, you can find the owner of that vehicle. And that, the owner of that vehicle can either be an individual, like Nikagule, or can be a corporate entity. And if you find the corporate entity, you find the directors who are the owners, right? In Nigeria, you cover up that plate number. What does that tell you? It tells you that there are people who are above the law in Nigeria. So for, for such people, if their vehicle should commit a crime, they cannot be traced. It should not, they, 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 they should not be touched. <clears throat> that is why the plate number is covered. Right? You know, in any nation where you have people who are above the law, it's not going to work, Nyamgo. Mr. President must know this because he is, he is the chief law officer of the, the nation. Okay. Because the Attorney General is reporting to him. You know, we must run Nigeria with the rule of law. If we don't run Nigeria with the rule of law, let's forget about development. It's not going to happen. There is no nation that people are above the law, people are doing things and they are not being held accountable for, that we try. Look, Mr. Nyanku, if you arrive in New York today, if you see the law enforcement going on in New York, with the New York Police Department properly funded, doing their work, and all other agencies doing their work to maintain law and order, Nobody will tell you that you have to behave. And you will behave. And we see it. You know, you will see Nigerians, <clears throat> they, will, they will carry convoy almost to the foot of the aircraft. 
in Abuja here. They get onto the aircraft almost with no checks. When they arrive in London Heathrow, Nyambu, I arrive with them always in, Nyam, uh, in London Heathrow. They become different people. So you see, the same person is behaving lawlessly in Nigeria and behaving lawfully in the United Kingdom. What is the difference? Is the rule of law, Nyambu. That's the difference. It's, it's the same person. So okay. the, it's just the environment that changed. So if we are ready, please, we must run Nigeria with the rule of law. This is the answer to your question on what must we do. Once there is rule of law, every other thing will be added on to us. Without rule of law, Nyamgo, we can try as much as we want. It will not happen. It's okay. as simple as that. All right, Nick, thank you so much. We're talking about um, uh, housing units that will be given to uh, the 774 local governments, uh, which will amount to 77,400 units. That's 100 units per uh, local government. And we're talking with Nick Agule. And he, you have just said it all. Rule of law is what is going to give us. Because if we have these housing units even, we may not get them the way the federal government is saying free housing unit for who and who can buy it and all that so let's just hope that uh, uh, the rule of law will be practiced and i'm hoping that the, the president will want to leave a legacy of a president who brought back the rule of law to nigeria he's one year into office and a little bit above we hope that the next three years or two and a half years will be used uh, to make sure that um, every sector is sanitized we'd like to thank you uh, mr nick agule for coming on the program this morning Thank you very much, Nyamgo, and have a nice day. You too. You as well. Okay, we'll take a short break, and uh, when we return, we'll be looking at women participation in our political process. And also, as an aside, we're going to be looking at uh, the six seats that the National Assembly has said that they are going to uh, leave for women and people living with disabilities. Just stay with us.